beautiful morning this is. The sun coming up through the fog is so pretty on the Lake of the Ozarks. And just such an honor to be here. Just love this place. Love the Missouri Ozarks. Love Missouri in general. The lakes growing up here. Uh, you grew up around lakes. And it's fantastic. Um, there's something that uh, Jesus talks about at the Lord's Supper that nobody really brings up. Um, I think it's important we bring it up. Um, and that's Matthew 26. We'll start in verse 29. But I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine now, from now on until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And, you know, it just says they sung a hymn. Uh, we can't really say what hymn that was. Um, I am sure it is a hymn that had something to do with facing death and trusting in God. I mean, I mean it, it, <laughs> It, he definitely wasn't singing about uh, glad times, that's for sure. And he was definitely trying to prepare himself. This whole thing had been a preparation. Um, so there's one particular Psalm by David uh, that I think it's very important because it's in the eyes of Jesus. Um, it's a Psalm written by David, um, but when he says me, it's capital M. This is, this is the savior, this is the the one who will redeem mankind. So this is the Psalm by David that is in the mind and eyes of Jesus Christ. It's fascinating. So we're gonna go to Psalm 22. This may not be the Psalm that he sang. Um, I kind of think it might be, um, you know, that's just me thinking that. But one thing is for sure, this gives us insight into what was in the mind of Jesus Christ. Because when we look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we get what they saw. We see, we get what a witnesses what a witness saw. What four witnesses viewed with their eyes. Here we get what's inside the mind of Jesus Christ as he went through this. So we're going to go to Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? And from the words of my groaning, Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not hear. But in the night season, I am not silent. But you are holy who inhabit the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not ashamed. But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despised of the people. All those who see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip. They shake the head saying, he trusted in the Lord. Let him rescue him, let him deliver him, since he delights in him. But you are he who took me out of the womb. You made me trust when I was on my mother's breast. I was cast upon you from birth, from my mother's womb. You have been my God, be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Many bulls have surrounded me, strong bulls of Bashan have encircled me. They gape at me with their mouths as raging and roaring lions and poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted within me. My strength is dried up like a pot shirt and my tongue clings to my jaws. You have brought me to the dust of death for dogs have surrounded me. The assembly of the wicked has enclosed me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count on my bones. They look and stare at me. They divide my garments among them and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far from me. O my strength, hasten to help me. Deliver me from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth and from the horns of the wild oxen. You have answered me. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him, all you descendants of Jacob. Glorify him and fear him all you offspring of Israel. For he is not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, nor has he hidden his face from him. But when he cried to him, he heard, my praise shall be of you in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him will praise the Lord. Let your heart live forever. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn to the Lord and all the families of the nations shall, shall worship before you. For the kingdom is the Lord's and he rules over the nations. 
All the prosperous of the earth shall eat and worship. All those who go down to the dust shall bow down before him. Even he who cannot keep himself alive, a posterity shall serve him. It will be recounted to the Lord to the next generation. They will come and declare his righteousness to the people who will be born, that he has done this. You know, I don't know if this is the, the hymn that they sang. I don't know. But it definitely fits the occasion. I don't think there's another song that fits the occasion more. Um, I obviously don't have all of them memorized, but this is the only one that, that, that essentially is in the mind and eyes of Jesus. It starts with, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This is a preparation. The song begins with feeling that way and, and, and recognizing that you're being surrounded by people that hate you and you're being mimicked or you're being ridiculed and, and you're being beaten and then you're being nailed to a cross. And then you're being ridiculed more and then they're casting lots for your garments. But you redeem mankind and all of mankind is redeemed through that. And the generations will be saved beyond Israel because of that, that he did this. It's really quite beautiful. It's, it's this thing that the song takes him through everything, but it shows him at the end, the value in this. And he's God and he loves us so much that he's willing to do it. You know, even though you feel that's all terrible, all that stuff leading up to that is terrible, but look what it did. Look what it did for future generations and people beyond Israel. Look what it did. It's beautiful. And as he voluntarily laid on that cross and was nailed to it, I'd like to think that he thought of this Psalm by David that, that somehow saw in the eyes and mind of Jesus Christ that it was worth it. That in the mind and eyes of God, it, it was worth it because we are worth it to him. It's beautiful. Hope these videos are helping. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. If you'll call to support this channel, the Patreon, that link is also below. And the most important part of this channel is we take prayer requests, so please don't ever hesitate to send that in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, love guns.